Good evening, everybody. Would you stand with us tonight? Glad to have you in the house of God. We have a special guest minister with us tonight. Pastor Carla will be ministering tonight. So we're looking forward to that with great expectations. Did you come with faith tonight to put a draw on the word? Well, Father, we thank you for your word tonight that's going to go forth, Lord, and the praise and worship. And we just honor you in this place, Lord. Have your way in this place, Lord. I thank you that that, uh, your spirit, Holy Spirit, will have your way and flow freely tonight. And we give you glory and praise in Jesus' name. And we all said, Amen. 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 Just worship God in this atmosphere. Hallelujah. Bless your name, Jesus. Father, you're so wonderful to us. We give you glory, honor, and praise. And we magnify your name. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your love. Faith. 
face of love No, I can't walk away Come on, everybody I just want to be where you are, Jesus I just want to be where you are Hallelujah I just want to be near There is nothing There is nothing like your love There is nothing, Jesus Worship, worship. Come on, worship the lover of your soul, Jesus. You are the lover of my soul, Jesus. Woo! Your great love. Can you just talk to him tonight? Woo! Tell him how much you love him. Woo! We cry holy, 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 holy. We cry holy, holy. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love. We cry holy. We cry. Worship. Come on, worship. I can't worship you for you. Your voice has a blueprint. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Spirit of the 
the Lord is in this house. Hallelujah. Would you lift your hands, please, before the Lord? Father, we worship you tonight. We bless the Lord, oh, with all of our souls and all that is within us. We bless your holy name. 
Father, we've come to just bask in your love, to drink of your love, your mercy, your loving kindness. Father, I'm asking that the Holy Spirit of God would pour out your love upon each and every one within the sound of my voice, that the love of God would soothe every heart, quiet every emotion, and that we would just bask in your love. Father, we thank you for your word this evening. You've sent us your word because you love us. Grant us ears to hear what the Holy Spirit would say to us tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Can you give the Lord a shout of praise? Hallelujah. At the end of the day, it's good to give the Lord a shout. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the love of God. <clears throat> it's so wonderful to be with you tonight. And I have actually been scheduled several times to come and speak, and I had no voice. And then I told Pastor Justin last week, I'm coming no matter what. And of course, we were iced out last week. So I told him, this week, I'm coming no matter what. Hallelujah. And so it is such an honor for me to be with you this evening. Hallelujah. I, um, when Pastor Justin asked me, I was reading in Matthew 24, and of course, lots of things can jump out at you. And I was going to read from Matthew 24, you know, it says, when lawlessness abounds, which we've definitely been experiencing, not only in this country, but in the whole wide world, it says the love of many will grow cold. So that's the way I was flowing, is preparing for what does it mean for the love of many to grow cold. But then you'll remember a couple of weeks ago, Dr. Savell was ministering and suddenly he got in his pocket and he pulled out some money and he said, <clears throat> Every time I speak, Carla comes to me before the service and gives me a hearing seed. How many of you heard him say that? And when he did that, I was so surprised because I've not told anyone about that. That was just between him, uh, between him and me. And... Uh, I realized, oh, the Lord wants to break this open. And so I've changed my topic. And I'm going to be ministering to you tonight on the hearing seed. I haven't taught on this before, so I'm planting a seed tonight and believing for more to come as I do share this with you. And uh, let me tell you that after he uh, said that, recalling the Sunday, I think it was about 2015 or 16, I'd come in from Kenya and um, was staying with Brother Jerry and Carolyn, and we were getting ready to go to church. It was a Sunday, and he was preaching. So I was all ready. I'd written my tithe check, got my Bible, and I was ready to walk out the door. And then I know you, you've experienced what I'm going to say when the Holy Spirit arrests you. And I mean, I heard clear as a bell, give him a hearing seed. Well, I stood there, and 
waited to see if that was all he was going to say. I didn't hear anything else. So I put my purse, my Bible, and all of that down. And I got a seed out of my wallet. And then I gathered everything back up and walked out. And Dr. Savelle was standing in the kitchen. And I walked up to him and said, Brother Jerry, I just heard to plant a hearing seed in you. And he, I said, so I handed it to him. He took my hand and prayed for me to have ears to hear that the Lord would increase my hearing. I said, thank you, Brother Jerry. We went to service, and we were standing right over there. And in the midst of praise and worship, I'm telling you, it was just like a barrel of oil was poured out on me and the tears began flowing down my cheeks and the Lord said two things. He said, I've done this and I've done that in your life. And I won't share that with you, the Savelles know, but uh, that that was just private between us. And um, when I heard that, It changed my trajectory. So when I talk about a hearing seed, I'm talking about believing God to hear at a level that will change things for you. How many of you could use some changes in your life? Well, I can tell you one of the elements of change is to be able to hear from God. I will never forget that Sunday as long as I live. I mean, I was down getting Kleenex. The tears were just flowing, and God wonderfully visited me. So I've got some things I want to share with you about that. And by the way, I've been planting hearing seeds in him every time he ministers and I'm here, I still go to him with a hearing seed. I I want to tell you, I may have to use my reading glasses some. I was writing this on my iPad, and I took it all the way up to 16 points, but it still printed out at 12 points. So it's a little late in the evening. I may put my glasses off, off and on. But anyway, church, let me assure you, God desires for us to hear his voice. This is tremendously important to him. And it is tremendously important for us to hear the voice of God. And I I want you to know that throughout the ages and the dispensations of time upon this earth, it has always been God's will for his people to hear his voice. Just listen to this. In the patriarchal age. Now, the patriarchal age is when God would speak to fathers of families and he would deal with families on the earth. For example, Enoch, Noah, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, he spoke to fathers of families. And um, in Genesis 22, 2, Abraham had known God for many years at this time. He actually heard God tell him to take his son, his only son, to the top of Mount Moriah and offer him as a burnt offering. Church, you've got to be really secure that you hear from God to take one of your children to offer as a burnt offering. But Abraham had walked with God for so long that he obeyed God and not reluctantly. I imagine he was waiting for God to do something wonderful and thank God he could hear at a high level because then in the 12th verse, he heard, don't lay your hand upon the lad. I mean, it was really important 
for Isaac that his father Abraham could hear from the Lord. Uh, fathers, I just want to say where your hearing is concerned and where even the hearing seed is concerned, it is very significant that you as a father hear from God. That has not changed. The will of God is for fathers. Now, mothers, I'm not excluding you, but I'm just making specific points tonight. If we were having a women's meeting, I'd deal with the women. But I'm talking about the patriarchal age. Everyone say patriarchal. In our generation, that's a dirty word. But actually, it is a Bible word, and it is a dispensation where God dealt with the fathers of families. And then, the next dispensation, God dealt with a nation, the nation of Israel under the law. What well, was it God's will for his people to hear his voice under the law? Deuteronomy 28, 1 and 2. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but it says, Now it shall come to pass, if you diligently obey the voice of of the Lord your God. So we see that it was the will of God in uh, the time of the law. Israel was the only nation under the law. It was the only nation that God had any influence with. And so then in verse 2, it says, and all these blessings, anyone in here interested in blessings, shall come upon you and overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. You know, I've actually heard some teachers in our day teach that uh, God will bless you and it's not necessary that this scripture was under the law and we're no longer under the law. So it's like God's going to bless you no matter what. Church, I can tell you that is error. That is error. Obedience was in the patriarchal age. Obedience to the voice of God was when God dealt with the nation of Israel under the law. And obedience is in the age of grace. The next dispensation is the dispensation of the gospel or the church age, and uh, God, did I turn the page? Yes. So God said in John 10.10, 10, the Lord said in John 10.10, 10, this is the dispensation where God deals with men through the gospel. That's the dispensation we're living in. And he says in John 10.10, 10, the doorkeeper, this is the NIV, the doorkeeper opens the door for him and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought all his own sheep out, he goes ahead of them and the sheep follow him because they recognize or know his voice. Church, it's so important that we recognize the voice of the Lord in this day when lies abound. I'm telling you, the lying, the deception of the enemy, I don't know if it has ever been more intense upon the earth. Certainly it hasn't in my lifetime. But he says, the sheep follow him because they recognize. There are many voices in the earth, but do you know as believers, we're to recognize the voice of the good shepherd. May I hear an amen on that? Amen. They will never follow a stranger, but will run away from him because they do not recognize the voice of a stranger. That means the voice of a stranger has no authority in their lives. It has no 
bearing on what I think or what I do because I recognize this voice is not from God. This voice is not telling me the truth. Church, may I hear an amen? Let's see, I've got another one. Matthew 11 and verse 15. This is the Amplified Bible. It's, this is very important about hearing the voice of God. He who has ears to hear, let him be listening. And uh, did I say Amplified? It's Amplified Classic. I, I don't think, yes, you've got it. Let him be uh, listening and let him consider and perceive and comprehend by hearing. By hearing. You will not know the truth, comprehend the truth, perceive the truth just because you're hearing words. But when you're hearing is by the Spirit of God, who is the Spirit of truth, you will hear him. May I hear an amen. Why is it so important for us to hear? Why is it that at a certain moment in time, the Lord told me, this, this is verbatim what he said that day some years ago, give him a hearing seed. Why is it so important that at this time, he brought that out of the secret place and spoke it to this congregation. I believe God has a purpose in it. And church, I want to tell you, we are called and destined to hear. But it is not automatic. There are many who are born again who do not hear. There are many who are born again who practice error. You know, let me just give you an example. Since I've been, quote unquote, in the process of being re-Americanized, I've studied a lot. I listen a lot. I read, comprehending the dramatic changes that have occurred since I left the country. Oh, it's been about 30, going on 35 years ago. Dramatic changes have taken place. Why is it so important for us to hear? Church, as the church goes, so goes the nation. If the church isn't hearing, then that nation will not be evangelized. Do you know, in some statistics I've looked up, I'm big on statistics, and I particularly like... Um, Christian, like Barna, where uh, they are supposed to have integrity. Do you know at least 40% of Christian young people live together before they get married? Forty percent. Ninety percent of the unborn again live together before marriage. And I, I didn't choose the high figure. 40 to 50% of Christians live together before they get married. Church, why? There's something wrong with our hearing. Do you know just about as many Christians get abortions? It's, it is less but it's very close, get abortions as the non-believers get. I'm astonished, appalled. Can anyone think of another word to help me? It, flabbergasted, is that what someone's flabbergasted? I mean, I don't even have words for that. 
And yet, oh yes, I love God. I'm a Christian. I know Jesus. Now, I'm, I'm not putting anyone down, but church, that tells me someone's not hearing. And it has affected the whole nation. The fact that the church is not hearing has affected the direction of the whole nation. May I hear an amen? It is critical for God's people to hear. Because God's, God said, I'll bless the nation whose God is the Lord. The nation whose God is the Lord will be blessed. That means we're hearing. And anyway, let, let me go on. Why is it so important for us to hear? It's important for our nation for us to hear. And church, personally, it's important because the Lord wants intimacy with us. He wants to <clears throat> share the secrets of the kingdom with us. He wants to reveal intimate things from his heart to our hearts. Church, there is nothing like intimacy with God. Nothing like it. There is nothing to compare to intimacy with God. The Father wants us to hear so that we can have intimacy with him. He wants us to know him. He wants us to delight in that intimacy with him. He wants us to obey him. He wants us, he wants to be able to lead us and help us in all the affairs of life. And that takes hearing. A prayer, I pray, Father, awaken my ears to hear. Because you know your ears can get dull. When God says, let him who has ears to hear, hear. Well, everyone has ears. But it doesn't mean that we have hearing ears. I, I don't have time to go into what it means to have uncircumcised ears. And when the Lord tells us, circumcise your ears, what does that mean? I don't have time to go in to all of that. But when the Lord says, he who has ears to hear, let him hear, he's not talking about physical ears, but he's talking about the ears of our heart. Our inner man has ears. He's not just talking about our outward ears, but our inner man has ears the ears of our heart. Solomon, after he had built the temple, and remember the grand celebration they had, and they sacrificed so many oxen, so much of this and so much of that. I mean, it was a tremendous celebration. And that night, God appeared to Solomon in a dream, and he said, ask what shall I give you? He was so pleased with Solomon's dedication, and Solomon did love the Lord. He was so pleased to him. Can you imagine the Lord saying, just ask me, and whatever you ask me for, I will do it. And so um, I won't read the whole of Solomon's response, but in verse 9, he said, therefore, Give to your servant an understanding heart. This is 1 Kings 3 and verse 9. 1 Kings 3 and verse 9. Therefore, give to your servant an understanding heart to judge your people that I may discern between good and evil. You know, that's one of the purposes of hearing of God granting us hearing, is that we may discern between good and evil. And Solomon asked for that. I mean, he could have asked for riches and honor, fame, all of that. 
But he said, give me an understanding heart to judge your people. And the Lord was so pleased with that prayer. Church, put your hand over your heart and let's pray that prayer. Say, Father in heaven, please give me an understanding heart. That's such an important prayer for us to pray. But do you know in Hebrew what that means? It means a hearing heart. In the original language, an understanding heart is a hearing heart. So we don't just hear with our ears, we hear with our hearts. Listen to this, 1 Kings 3, 9, in the Amplified Bible. It says, so give your servant an understanding mind and a hearing heart to judge your people that I may discern between good and bad. So, church, it's with our hearts that we hear from heaven. It is with from our hearts that we hear the Holy Spirit. So what does the Bible say in Proverbs 4? Guard your hearts, for out of it flow the issues of life. If we want hearing, church, it comes out of our heart. We hear with a heart. It's not just physically hearing with our ears, but we hear from heaven. We hear from the kingdom of God. We hear God-anointed teachers and preachers, not just with physical ears, but we hear from our hearts. Above all, the gift that King Solomon wanted, the wisest man that ever lived other than Jesus, he wanted a hearing heart. Let me ask you this question tonight. Do you want a hearing heart? Hallelujah. I desire that. I need it. I desire it. The intimacy that so far I've experienced with the Lord is the delight of my life. I know one morning, I mean, the Lord has a sense of humor. One morning I was sound asleep and I heard this. Just like that. I laid there for a few minutes, and and I knew it was the Lord. I said, Lord, what are you doing? And he said, I've come for fellowship, not for judgment. You know, it was like my reaction was, what are you doing? I mean, what's wrong? And he said, I've come for fellowship, not for judgment. He's got a sense of humor, doesn't he? He knows how to get our attention. Let me give you some keys for a hearing heart. These are the ones God has taught me. I'm not sure I can leave these on because I can see you great. So I'm, I'll put them on for a moment. Keys for a hearing heart. These are things God has taught me. And of course, it agrees with the word. One thing that... Uh, I would say one of the primary early revelations I received was I had read a book by a man named Howard Carter. Have any of you ever heard of Howard Carter? Well, I I had been born again not over two years. And and I'm sure someone gave me that book. I wouldn't have known uh, who he was or to order it. And so I'm sure I was given that book, and I read this book on the gifts of the Spirit, which raised as a Methodist, God bless all the Methodists, but raised as a Methodist, I didn't know that there even was a Holy Spirit, much less gifts of the Spirit. How many of you know what I'm talking about? So this was a whole new world for me. Those of you raised in Pentecost and charismatic and all of that, uh, 
it, it may be hard for you to understand, but I did not know the Holy Spirit was who he was. And I had absolutely zero knowledge about gifts of the Spirit. Who ever heard of gifts of the Spirit? But I was given this book by Dr. Howard Carter, and I read it. I will just say I sucked that book up. And it was so profound. I was deeply impacted by it. But when I closed it, I'm a ponderer, so I pondered it. But one day, this came out of my mouth. Lord, I still don't know what the key to the gifts of the Spirit are. What key to the gifts of the Spirit is. I, I, I got knowledge from that. I got understanding. But I, I felt like on the inside, this just came out of me. I still don't know what the key to the gifts of the Spirit is. And just like that, <clears throat> the Lord spoke up on the inside of me and said, always tell the truth. I'm going to give you that as a, I mean to me, the key for hearing if you're going to say, number one, church, you have to always tell the truth. You live in the truth. You seek the truth. No falsehoods, made up stories, fabrications. Not, you have nothing to do with any lie. Absolutely nothing. I'm telling you, I didn't even have a clue to the answer that I just told you that I heard the Spirit of God say. What's the key to the operation of the gifts of the Spirit? Always tell the truth. Would you say that with me, please? Always tell the truth. Let's say that one more time. Always tell the truth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm just telling you, then later, because I was only referring to that book, but later I began to see this is a major key to walking in the Spirit, everything regarding the Holy Spirit. And church, He is the Spirit of truth. So if we want light, if we want understanding, if we want answers from God, if we want that intimacy with him, we're going to have to live in the truth. But that the way God said it to me, always tell the truth. I mean, there are some stories I could tell you about this. One man, I, um, he, he had been in special ops and, uh, and he was telling me some things about infiltrating and all of this and he said you know we come out of that you maybe do that for some years we're so messed up and I said well you're going to have to back out of the deceptions I mean bring your whole being your whole self before God and back out of those falsehoods, lies, uh, everything involved with, I'm sure, special ops. And uh, I'm not judging them one way or the other about that, but they would come out messed up. I'm not saying all, I'm just saying what he said. Because what do lies do? They throw everything off course, off center. Their lies are very disturbing to you, to your inner man. And you're at war on the inside when you tell lies. So church, <clears throat> a lot I could say about that.
But this is a major key. Always tell the truth. If you want to operate in the things of the Spirit, including hearing from God, always tell the truth. Can someone say amen? And what time is it? Okay, just a few more minutes. Um, Number two, we're talking about hearing, supernatural hearing, hearing, and it come, it becomes natural to hear. I used to, when God would say something to me, you know, it used to just almost knock me down and it would arrest me, and, and it still can. It, it depends on, you know, how he says it, but I'm talking about how do we exercise ourselves in hearing. Number one, always tell the truth. Number two, you have to stay in the word. What does the Bible say? Thy word is truth. The word is ultimate truth. It is essential to stay in the word. Now, you have to do what God tells you to do because I've done different things in the years I've been a Christian. But for the last few years, I've read entirely through the Bible every year for years. And do you know why I made that decision? Because I want the word, even if I don't, comprehend all about Leviticus and, and the offerings and all the genealogies and, and, and some things, you know, I've been plowing through the book of Job and uh, some things I kind of plow through. <clears throat> However, I want that word, not just my favorite word, but I want the word sifting through my inner man. So I read through it every year. I mean, you've got to have some structure and discipline in your life to do that. Because I know your parents. I I know you're busy. I know you have jobs. And uh, you need rest. and, And all, you need some balance in your life. But schedule your whole life after you've been in the Word. Now, you may not be like me. You may read it at midnight. At midnight, I'm in bed. (laughs) And uh, I'm not not reading at midnight as a rule. So what do I do? I do it first thing in the morning when I'm fresher. And for me, I'm giving God my first and my best. But stay in the word. Romans 10, 17 says, Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. If you want supernatural hearing, communication, intimacy with God, stay in the word. Don't let the devil rob you of your word time because he can get your life so whoppy-jawed Is that a good word in Texas? Do we know what whoppy-jawed means? He can get your life so whoppy-jawed that you're just frantically trying to keep up with everything and you don't spend quality, quiet time in the Word. Number three, boy, this was a big one for me. And you have to grow up (laughs) to exercise this one. But number three, the Lord taught me, be willing to hear anything. (laughs) Be willing to hear anything. Now, I'm not talking about from anybody, but I'm talking about from God and those in spiritual leaders and Actually, God can even use a donkey. So, uh, but this is what he taught me. You know, I can't be protective 
and guarded about my hearing. Like, I don't want to hear anything about my flaws and immaturity. And how many of you know we can be guarded about things like that? We just don't want to hear about it. I don't want to hear that. No, if you're going to develop and mature in hearing, be willing to hear anything the Holy Spirit wants to say to you. Now, guys, when, when he taught me that, I realized, oh, I had shields up around my heart. So I'd come up against something, and I could feel resistance on the inside, and I would just have to stop and say, Lord, I'm bearing myself before you. I'm willing to hear anything you want to say. Now, I don't know if I'm articulating this well or not, but most of us have guardedness in, my, in our hearts, even from the Word and the Spirit. We set up guard rails around our hearts. Be willing to hear anything. Instruction. <clears throat> you know, some people don't like to be told what to do. Well, that's going to affect your hearing. <laughs> don't tell me what to do. You know, they, they resent authority. They resent their boss. I mean, my dear ones, if I know... Probably no one in here is guilty of that. But God had to deal with me. It's called submission. I didn't get much of a response on that. Okay, let me repeat. Number three, <laughs> be willing to hear anything. Okay, we didn't do too well with instruction. But the next one is correction. It's even stronger. Let, let me tell you something. Most of the time, we need to be corrected. But even if you don't need to be corrected, it is good for you to be corrected when you don't need to be corrected because the shields that are up around your heart just keep they just keep falling away. Are you with me? Till God has your whole heart. The next one is be willing to hear rebukes. I pondered that as I prepared this the last few days. And the Lord's rebuked me severely at times. I can remember one time when he surprised me so much rebuking me. It was a few months after my husband died. I, I don't know how many months, but it was months after my husband died. He died in 2012. And, you know, it was sudden. It was um, <laughs> left me with a lot of responsibility that I never knew I would have. And uh, I was having to help the church through it, the kids through it. I mean, we were all going through it. But all of us, were we were getting better. But every once in a while, like I don't wear jewelry, I'm always in sweats in the house and very casual. And... Um, so I don't wear jewelry, but I was going out probably to church and I was standing, leaning against the dresser and I was really just that grief swept over me and uh, I, I, it was so strong. I was leaning against the dresser. I stopped putting on my earrings and everything to go out and I was just thinking, Lord, I just can't believe he's gone and so on and so forth. And suddenly, I heard. Now, remember, you've got to be willing to hear anything. Suddenly, I heard. Carla, I tell you, that was so strong. I stood back from the dresser, and I looked around. 
I thought God had entered my bedroom. Wade's married to me now. There was a firmness like I need you to get this. Wade's married to me now. And it was like I was grieving for something that would never be again. And Wade couldn't have been happier being married to Jesus. You know what I mean. I mean, he was in a wonderful place and God needed me to get it together. I'll tell you, that was a turning point. A t but, but there was a rebuke in it. And I said to the Lord, I can't believe you talked to me that way. <laughs> I did. I did. <laughs> I can't believe you talked to me that way. I'm this grieving widow. <laughs> and you've just rebuked me. <laughs> but you know what? You got to be willing to hear anything. And it was good for me. And it jerked the slack out of me. Somebody say amen. It was definitely a turning point for me. And you know, if you'll be able, be willing to hear these things, then you might hear revelation. There are other things God has for you to hear and receive insights and extraordinary, uh, wonderful uh, thoughts and uh, dreams and Amazing things that the Lord will do in your life, but you've got to be willing to hear anything, church, if you want to have supernatural hearing. Hallelujah. And then number four, you must be willing and obedient. I'm not sure I understand. Oh, hush. This, every once in a while it just talks. Be willing and obedient. And this, let, let me tell you something about the word here. The word here is shama. S-H-A-M-A. Shama is the Hebrew word for hear. And church hearing isn't just hearing words. And then you think about it a while and you decide whether to obey those words or not. That's not hearing. But shama <clears throat> means to hear. And we just kind of stop right there. But it means so much more. To listen. You know, there's a bit of difference in hearing and listening. But all of this is involved in the word hear, in the Hebrew understanding. It means to give close attention to. It means to submit to. If you're going to have hearing, you're, you're going to have to have a submissive heart. Remember, we hear with our hearts. It means to obey. Now, as Americans, in the Western thinking, hearing is passive. You sit and you listen, you hear. It's passive. But do you know, in the Hebrew understanding, hearing and obeying, you hear to obey. So it's action. In our thinking, we've heard... If we've come to church tonight and we listen to the message we've heard. But in the Hebrew understanding, you've not heard, you've not finished hearing till you obey. So why do we hear church? We hear to obey. That's the purpose of hearing. Yes, it's intimacy with God. But, but it results in obedience. Why do we hear? To obey. We have not completed hearing until we obey. 
Isaiah 119 says, if you are willing, what does that mean? You're yielded. You're willing to hear anything. You're submissive. You're not in charge of your, of your life. You've yielded your life to the Lord. And whatever he wants to say to you, you're willing to hear it. If you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. This is where levels of blessing come in because we're willing to hear that you're not going to experience if you're not willing to hear. Our hearing is affected by our intent to know him. I say this scripture, Philippians 3.10, all the time, that I may know him in the power of his resurrection. This, I've taken this as one of my life scriptures, that I may know him in the power of his resurrection in the fellowship of his sufferings, and be conformed to him, even in death. So when I say our hearing is affected by our intent to know him, you have to press in to hear. Why are we pressing in to hear? That we might know him. Without hearing, you're just not going to have the intimacy with him. You won't have the knowledge that God wants you to have because you're not hearing. And then, of course, not just that we might know him, but that we might obey him. Now, let me share this, and we're closing. So what does this have to do? What does a hearing seed have to do with this? So let, let me say this. A hearing seed, and I've really pondered on this, is a first fruits offering or seed. A first fruit offering, I I made several notes, I may read some of this. A first fruits offering is not your tithe. I can read in the Bible about the tithe. And God set the measure of the tithe. It is 10%. It is false to say the tithe belongs only in the old covenant. I'm not teaching on that tonight, but it passed through the cross into the new covenant. God set the measure. It activates our covenant, tithing is so significant. But first fruits are very significant. A first fruit offering puts God first in an area you're believing for. You set the measure of a first fruits offering. You have your lump, as they said in the old covenant. They called it a lump. Or you have your amount. Maybe you've got $20 in your purse. And you want to give a first fruits offering. You've got an issue. But let's say it's hearing. Lord, I need a greater anointing on my hearing. I want a a bigger capacity to hear. In my life, I'm giving you a first fruit seed and you take $5. There's not a set amount. You set the amount. That morning when I walked out with the hearing seed to give to Brother Jerry, I set the amount. It's not my tithe. But with a first fruits offering, what you're doing, uh, it's the beginning of something you're believing God for. It's the beginning of a new thing. And you acknowledge that new thing will come from God. And so you set the amount of your first fruits offering 
regarding what you're believing God for. You're putting him first in this new thing. And you give your first fruits offering out of what you have. When you sow a hearing seed, you set the amount. Why are we sowing a hearing seed? Well, there could be any number of reasons that you may need to hear. How many of you in here need to hear? All the time. Church, I can say, you know, I've developed in this, but there aren't many things I do that I don't stop and listen before I do it. Why? Because I don't want to walk in the flesh. (laughs) I don't want to be out of the will of God. There are not many things that I don't stop and listen. I need to hear. So when I sow a hearing seed, it's a first fruits offering. A number of things are involved. It's, it's a first fruits offering for the Holy Spirit to work and sanctify me. You know, all of our giving has to do with sanctification. Our tithe has to do with sanctification. Our offerings have to do with sanctification. Our building fund. Church, it has to do with our personal sanctification. If it doesn't in your heart, um, I don't know how much of an anointing is going to be released because you're going to need to hear for whatever reason you're giving. Are you with me? And we hear with our hearts. So what does that mean? Our hearts have to be right with God. <clears throat> May I hear an amen? So we're rel- when we sow a hearing seed, We're sowing that God would sanctify our hearing, our motives, our obedience. Our giving always involves sanctification. First fruits is the beginning of a new thing that I don't have yet. But God is my source. I'm putting him first place and I'm believing him for this new thing. Thing. When I sow a hearing seed, I'm believing for the anointing and grace to hear from God. And that he would work in my heart, preparing my heart, sanctifying my heart to hear a new thing. I determine the measure. I release my faith to hear. I judge my heart. I ask God for greater ability to hear. God's got the plan, church. I need to hear it. Can you say amen? And so church, I'm believing that God will unlock greater levels of hearing in heritage of faith. Are you with me? Is that the desire of your heart, that God would unlock greater levels of hearing, that we're not in this world on our own, but if we'll yield our hearts up to him, I've got a hearing seed. I prepared a hearing seed before I came. Do we receive offerings on Wednesday night, okay. Um, Church, I think we ought to sow a seed to hear. Hallelujah. So I'm just going to ask you to take a moment, prepare that seed. We're going to ask God to do a new thing with our hearing. I know he's done that in me. 
there have been <clears throat> some remarkable things I've heard, remarkable instances, um, unexpected, that I would hear from him. And I know he's got that for everyone here, that we would have ears to hear what the Holy, what does that mean? A heart, a determination, a desire, a fervent need, great and deep desire to hear whatever God would say to us. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Deborah, do you sing or do I just continue? <laughs> I don't want to miss one of Deborah's songs, do you? <laughs> okay, all right. Everyone, do you have your seed? This is a hearing seed. Lift it up and say, this is my hearing seed. Is my hearing seed. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus. May your Holy Spirit sweep over this precious congregation and give us ears to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to the church and to us directly and intimately. I'm asking that you would grant us ears to hear, hearts that hear, in the name of Jesus, may our hearts hear from the Holy Spirit. Grant us discerning hearts, Father. Grant us, Father, hearts that are pressing into you to hear. There are so many words released in the earth, but we want to hear from heaven. And Father, I thank you for doing a new thing with our hearing. A new thing, Father. Things that we've never heard before, depths of hearing. For us personally, for each family represented here, for each father here, Father, may you grant them ears to hear. For each family. May there be an increase of hearing. And Father, for this church congregation, may we be a hearing church. In the name of the Lord Jesus, Father, for your glory and your honor, we thank you for hearing ears. And every believer says, Amen and Amen. Ushers. I want mine planted. Thank you. Church, I love you. You're precious to me. Uh, thank you for letting me minister tonight. It's just been a joy to be with you. Pastor Carla, how many points did you have in your notes to tell us tonight? You got through four, but how many did you have? You had four? Good. Yes. So that was all you had for? We got them all? We got all the points? Those four points. Okay. Yes. All right. <laughs> Just checking. Did you enjoy tonight? Yeah. Isn't that good? That was good. I think timely. Timely. We want to hear, so we need to know how to hear, right? We need to put ourselves in position to hear. Just a few announcements before I let you go tonight and while the ushers finish up. Um, this weekend is the Super Bowl, so we have Super Bowl parties for the youth and for the young adults. So parents of youth, your youth should be here at 3.30 on Sunday if they want to participate. And young adults will be starting at 5 o'clock at um, Eric and I's house. So if you don't know where that is, come ask us. We'll get you information. And if you haven't already told us you're coming, young adults, then you can jump on the Church Center app and sign up under the groups, young adults, so that we know and we can get you information. And then the Texas primary early voting starts Monday, February 14th. So this coming Monday is the early voting for the primary. So you should have gotten an email um, this week from the church about that and any information if you want to research what's going to be on there and who, who you're going to be voting for. So you can check out your email. If you didn't get it in your email, check your junk email. And if you still can't find it, let us know that you
you didn't get it so that we can correct that information and get that to you so you can be communicated to. And then next, not this Sunday, but the following Sunday on February 20th will be Thrive Groups. So if you haven't, if you, I know we're so ready for them to start back up for 2022. Everyone's been asking, when are we doing this? So yes, February is our month. So February 20th at 5 o'clock, we're going to have Thrive Groups. So we'll have Youth Rec Night and Children's Night here at the church. So if you have kids, you can drop them off before you go. So check out all that information online. And then, of course, don't forget about February 27th. That evening, that Sunday night service with Dr. Savell at 6 o'clock with our apostle is our point of contact offering. So we're going to be believing to hear what it is that we're going to be believing for and sowing toward and what we should sow that night. So again, timely message right before then. So let me pray over you before you go. Father, we thank you for this word. We thank you that it will guide us all week long, Lord, not just week, but year, lifetime. Father, I thank you that we will have ears to hear. I thank you, Lord. In faith, I trust that you will speak to us because it's your desire that we hear. So Father, everything that we need to know, we purpose to do these points that Pastor Carla pointed out tonight. We'll be willing to hear what you want to tell us, Father. We're correctable and instructionable. Father, and we'll listen to rebuke when necessary. Father, I just thank you, Lord, that over each person over here, we just plead the blood of Jesus over each one. Father, no matter what we come up against this week or what comes around us, Father, I thank you that according to the word we heard Sunday, we are covered, we are canopied, we are protected. I thank you no weapon formed against this church prospers, Father, in the name of Jesus, no harm will come near us. Father, as your children and as blood covenant partners, Father, we thank you for the blessing that's ours, and we will obey your word so that we can live in your blessings, in the abundant life that you've prepared for us. Father, I thank you that we're blessings going somewhere to happen. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Give him Jesus.